So what I found works well, for me anyway, is instead of sitting there with a marker or eyeballing it, I just put a blue piece of tape. I suppose the wider, the less likely it's to deviate. And I just put the uh, tape around the corners all the way there we go, to the other side. And then I just trim it off. Little rotary tool. And next up is trimming all these tabs. So I am doing that. I already have a couple of them done there, four of them to be exact. It looks like there's a couple of dozen total. It also seems like the ailerons and the flaps have the same tab. This is a sanding block. This one's pretty beat up. I get 60 grit or 80 grit on one side and 100 or 120 on the other. It was actually just a piece of acrylic. I glue the sandpaper on and then I run them through the table saw. And uh, what I like about it is that if you sand it and you go into the edge, now the rounded part here, if I were to do that with the file, it would kind of take a nick out of it and create a um, you know, an uneven area, but with this, it allows me to take the high spots off and, uh, you know, just take the rough edges off like that. And then I run a little emery cloth over it, or a piece of sandpaper. And ultimately, oh yeah, look at me. Ultimately, the goal is <laughs> to not be able to tell which side the tab was on. Sometimes they have a little bit of a bend to them, just from, I think, when they bend it, but it's smooth, no cut fingers. Next on the agenda is rolling the edge of the flaps and ailerons like so with that. So I've been looking for a pipe that's more robust than the PVC pipe for reasons stated in the other videos, like for the rudder I used this nice metal one that worked well. And I finally broke down, went to Home Depot, I couldn't find a pipe um, any, any bigger than that. Well, I take that back, you could get like these massive electrical conduit things, but I decided to go with the PVC. And because the 10 foot pipe didn't fit into my car, I went with the truck to my shop and uh, <laughs> decided to cut it, never thinking six feet would be too short. Wouldn't you know it? I cut it exactly at six feet because it's a nice even number and it doesn't leave me enough room to stick the screwdriver in. <laughs> so now I have a, a six foot and a four foot pipe and uh, obviously next stop was right back to Home Depot get a 10 foot pipe that I'm now going to cut 6 foot and 1 inch or maybe 2 inches. Then these bars I, um, I went through with my little miniature uh, deburring tool and did the best I could with the holes and then I um, so this idea came from I believe it's S21 project uh, YouTuber and I basically I'm not exactly sure how he did it but it was a pretty good idea I just stapled some sandpaper on it and rolled it I had to tell with one hand, rolled it up, stuck it in there, and filed the rest of the shavings out. Um, yeah, it's obviously you gotta go from either end. But that worked pretty good, so kudos to Mr. S21 Project for that. And I think we're gonna line up the ribs and roll this thingy. That's the plan for tonight.
So while checking to make sure our contour is uh, acceptable, I started to click all these ribs in and just out of excitement to see three-dimensional view. But then I realized that the ribs are gonna have to be drilled on the bottom anyway, so I need to mark them. The instructions say to measure in 0.2 inches. Now, if you look close, oh, let's see, let's support ribs. So if you look closely, I don't know if you can tell, but this side is actually wider than this side, which is probably what threw off the holes when they had them pre-drilled. Anyway, long story short, I took a piece of 3 16 um, ABS, and if you just lay this flat on the table, and then run your flare pen along it, along it, you can get those marks really quick without having to measure a ton. And if you do measure it, it actually ends up being exactly two tenths of an inch in. All right, we got this far. I got the spar in, but I gotta be honest with you, that was a not feel good thing because it tells you just to, to slide it in as if it were to just slide in, but there's ribs. So obviously this one I can see, but uh, I believe it's this one, that's the thin metal. And yeah, I guess these two. And it gets caught up on them and it like just doesn't want to go. It almost locks into it. So I started undoing the Clicos on this side to take some tension off of the top of it. But there's still a good amount of tension on it. Anyway, I got it all riveted in place on the number 30 holes. Next step is to transfer drill all of these on the bottom. And then I think I'm gonna take it all apart. I may have actually bent the last part of that rib, um, one of them, uh, because I took the Clicos out, I probably shouldn't have. And I think I'm gonna actually open it up, clean everything, then try and put the spar in before I start getting all the way to the top here with clicking the skins on before I drill it. That's my game plan. All right, because we had such a hell of a time, or I had such a hell of a time sliding this thing in from the side and actually compromising the rib a little bit, we decided to take all these rivets off, the first row, all the way across. And then with help from Jenna, we opened this up, kind of just opened it up and slid it in this way. This way we didn't have to force it all the way across. And now we're gonna master it. So we took everything apart again. This is the left flap. And we deburred all of the holes. A little help from Jenna here. Sanded everything so there's no more markings on it and I put tiny little marks. These didn't actually touch anywhere, but this is just the closest point. So I took a file, and this is actually a file for sharpening chainsaw blades. You can buy them by the dozens on Amazon, but it just happened to be almost the same radius. So I just worked it up and down a little bit, and then Jenna went over and uh, sanded the rough edges off. So now we're gonna assemble the whole thing, hopefully for the final time.